for joining us and we pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning comes from Colossians 2 verses 6 through 7. Colossians 2 verses 6 through 7. <clears throat> and it reads, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. You know, once we accept Christ Jesus, we can't sit down. We have to continue to follow him. We have to work at following Jesus. Because if Satan had his way, he would stop us dead in our tracks. But I want the presence of God in my life, in my family's life, in my home. Because where God is, there is peace. And I want the peace of God. I want Jesus to be my ruler and my God. And Jesus wants to take charge of our lives. He wants to guide us and to help us in all of our decisions and all of our challenges in life. But in order for Jesus Christ to guide us, we have to be rooted in him. Just as plants draw nourishment from the soil through their roots, we draw our life-giving strength from Christ. The more we commit our lives to Christ, seek and learn from him, and recognize the Holy Spirit's power within us, our faith grows and we overflow with thanksgiving in our hearts. So we welcome the presence of God in our lives, in our houses, in our hearts.
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. God, we thank you now. Lord, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you, for you are the great God. Lord, we praise you for just who you are. We praise you, Father God, for what you have done. We praise you, Father, for what you're doing even right now. We pray that you bless us, Father God, that we will be able to continue to praise you all the day long. Now, Lord, we come asking you to forgive us from, for, your, for our sins. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us, Father God, for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you to bless us now as we confront your word, that your word will confront us, that we will be convicted, that we will be converted, and that our lives will continue, that we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before him. He has blessed us one more again to be on the land of the dying, headed for the land of the living. And we thank God for it. He has been a blessing to us. As a matter of fact, he has been the blessing. And we thank him for it. We praise God for who he is and what he has already done. He is such an awesome and such a great God. <clears throat> Let me call your attention again to Deuteronomy chapter 8. We look at those last three verses. We will complete Deuteronomy chapter 8 today. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18, 19, and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18, 19, and 20. I want to remind you, remind you that we serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is God all by himself. He's given us another chance to inhale, exhale, to breathe, to have blood flowing to every extremity of our body. Nobody did it but God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18 through 20. When you find it, you will discover these words. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, Amen. that you may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. I want to talk about remember the God of resources. <clears throat> remember the God of resources. Moses here reminds us as he reminded the children of Israel that there is only one true God. And he is the God of resources. The God that we serve. God who has blessed us in spite of us. He is, he is the God of our resources. We have to keep in mind that God himself is not a resource. But he is the God of all resources. If we're going to be blessed, if God is going to bless us, we're going to have to remember that he's the God of resources. God himself is our source. He is not our resource, but he is the God of all resources. You see, 
when the earth was null and void, when there was darkness upon the deep. The God, the only true God, the God, the living God, stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere and said, let there be, and light came. He's the God of resources. See, today we have light in different forms because the God that created the sun and the moon, he allowed man to create the light, the light bulb as we know it. He's the God of resources. You see, God is our source. But our house is our resource. Our apartment is our resource. Our children are our resources. <clears throat> These are things in our lives that make life better for us. And I'm telling you, if you're going to depend on anything or anybody, you need to remember the God of your resources. See, Moses penned this letter to the Israelites. And he says to them, first of all, <clears throat> bless the Lord. He says, for the Lord God is a good God. Remember the Lord your God. For is for your own good. He says, praise him, bless the Lord, because when we praise the Lord, we remember who God is and we are thankful unto him. We must remember the God of our resources. He reminded them, he reminded the Israelites, as I remind you this morning, it was God that brought them out of bondage. They were locked down in Egypt for hundreds of years. And Pharaoh had them under his control. They were in bondage. But God sent Aaron and Moses. And they were delivered. And God created plagues after plague after plagues. God delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh. And when they left, Pharaoh decided, I changed my mind. But really, God, God had hardened his heart. Pharaoh decided he changed his mind. He went running after the Israelites. And the songwriter would tell you that, that his army and Pharaoh got drowned in the Red Sea. Can't you see the Israelites standing at the borders of the Red Sea, standing at the bank of the Red Sea? They're standing there, and it looked like they were in an impossible situation. Valleys and hills and wilderness on both sides of them. The Red Sea in front of them. The deserts on both sides of them, and Pharaoh's army coming behind them. It was just more, one more time that God had the privilege of showing himself mighty and had an 80-year-old man raise up a stick in his hand. This 80-year-old man, Moses, raised his stick and the Red Sea stood up like a man. The walls, the Bible said, congealed. The walls of the Red Sea stood up. The waves laid down, but the water stood up. In the, the, the soldiers coming in at the Israelites, the Israelites marched through dry ground. They marched through dry ground, and the, the soldiers coming in after them, Moses holds up a stick again, and the water collapsed. And the songwriter declares that Pharaoh and his army got drowned in the sea. When we look at the text today, we find ourselves in a warning. 
Not only is Moses warning the Israelites, I'm warning you today mm -hmm. to remember the God of our resources. We must remember. Remember, he kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. Mm -hmm. When the Israelites were marching through the wilderness, God already brought them out of bondage and they're marching through the wilderness. There was a terrible thing taking place. There were fiery snakes there. There were scorpions there. But God created a mean for them to survive in the wilderness. God protected them. God kept them. They got thirsty and God granted them water out of flinty rock. They got hungry and God gave them manna, food, from above that their foreparents never knew about. He had proven to be the God of their resources, but when they got to Canaan land, mm -hmm. God knew when they get to Canaan, they had a tendency to forget. Just like many of us today, we forget about God once we have arrived. So Moses penned these final three verses to remind them to remember the God who has kept you. Remember the God of your resources. He says in verse number 18, and you shall remember the Lord your God. You see, many times when we eat and we are full, many times when we have favor and we've been blessed, many times when life has given us all we want, we forget the God that got us there. We forget, we forget how God kept us and he was a company keeper all night long. We forget that God is the one who was the great physician, the doctor, when the doctors gave us up. We forget, we forget that when our children were hungry, when we were hungry, that God provided a way out of no way. And he fed us because he is bread on a starving table. We forget, we forget just a few months ago, just a couple years ago, just a few days ago, when the hurricane hit, many of us were standing in lines to get water and to get ice because God had provided it for us. Yes. We like to give more credit to FEMA than we do to God. Mm -hmm. Moses says... Don't forget. In other words, remember. That's right. And you shall remember the Lord your God. He's only one God. All over this world, men, women, boys, and girls are confused about this polytheism when it comes to God. This word polytheism means that, that there are several gods. And, and as beautiful as Hawaii is, as relaxing as Hawaii can be. The problem I saw right away is they serve too many gods. <laughs> you can go to the fire store, the, the fire show at night, and, and you can see them calling on the God of fire. You can go to the sea and to the beach, and you can see them calling on the God of water. If you can you can go to your hotel and they got statues erected in there of a god that they serve who has has is made of mortar and brick. He has feet and can't walk. He has hands and can't feel. He has a heart and does not feel the infirmities of mankind. Over in Hawaii, they have too many gods for me. But we don't have to take that trip across the water. We don't have to take that trip to Hawaii. We can see right here in the great United the upper 48, we can see right here in the great United, United States of America, in the first 48 states, we can see where men have turned their lives over to idol God. They have gods all around them, and they praise those gods. They have forgotten about the God who provides for us, the God who keeps us, the God who watches over us. Right here in the great state of Texas, we have forgotten about 
the God who is able to provide us with our resources. Moses says, remember the Lord your God. For he who gives you power to get wealth. For it is he. It is God that gives you the power. It is God that established you with great power. It is God. This word power is strength. This word power is substance. This word power is might. This word power is the ability. God is the one who gives you the ability to get wealth. Moses says, remember. Remember this God who gives you the ability to get wealth. This God gives you the ability to to accomplish things in your life. This God gives you the ability to get wealth. This word wealth is valor. This word wealth is, he fights for you in times of war. This word wealth means that God has surrounded us with an army of blessings and, and we may choose every now and then, if not always, to give honor to a God that didn't supply to us. This word wealth means resources. In other words, we have to get to a point in our lives where when we arrive, when we get all we can get, when, when we arrive, when we get focused on what we need, when, when we arrive, when we get over into Canaan land, when, when we get the house we want, when we get the bank account we want, when we get the 401k we want, when we get the retirement we want, when we get our stocks right when we want it, we must remember the God of our resources. <laughs> when we get the job we want, don't forget God. Many times people tell me, Pastor, when I get my ship, and when my ship comes in, I'm first thing they holler, first thing I'm gonna do is pay the church off. First thing they say is I'm gonna I'm gonna pay the church off and, and I'm gonna bless this church tremendously. And my response is don't wait till your ship come in. Just give 10% or more now. And God knows that if he can trust you with the little bit, he can trust you with a lot. <clears throat> Don't wait till your ship come in. Don't wait till you hit the lotto. Don't wait until you get a bunch of money to bless the Lord. Bless him while you got a little bit. Because if he can trust you with a little bit, he can trust you with a lot. Amen. Problem is God can't can't trust us when our ship comes in. When, when our ship comes in, when we get the resources we want, the question remains, will God be able to trust you? He goes on to say he is the one that gives us the ability to get wealth. <laughs> this phrase, ability to get wealth, this, this phrase, the power to get wealth, it means, it, it means to us today that God gives us the ability to go make some things happen on our own. He's not the God that's going to do, do for you what you can do for you, but you have to participate with God in his blessings. Not one single job that I have received, you may have a different testimony than me, but not one single job that I have been a part of, not one single job that I've been successful in obtaining, did God drop it to my house or drop it out the sky or drop it in my lap. God gave me the ability. God gave me the ability to present myself well in the interview. God gave me sense enough to get a good night's sleep before the interview. God gave me sense enough to research the company in which I was going to be a part of. God gave me the ability to go and check it out ahead of time. God gave me the ability to, to drive by the company and see what the building looked like, what their the core is. And God gave me the ability to dress right and to speak well. And if I didn't know how to speak well, and there was a time when I didn't know how to speak well, he gave me the ability, he gave me the power to stand in front of the mirror and practice it over and over and over again yes. until it became a part of me. 
It says to us this morning that God is not some mystical God that's going to make things happen on your behalf, it says God will give you the power to get wealth. What he's saying is God will give you the ability to get the resources that you need. Today we have too many young men who are able-bodied men, who are healthy men that will not take advantage of the health, the strength, in order to get the wealth that God has for them. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when sisters work more than the men do. It's a sad day when sisters pay for their ride or let them drive their ride, drop them off in their ride, be late picking them up in their ride when they just going back home, sitting under the tree or doing whatever they choose to do. God, the God that we serve is a God that makes it possible. He's the God that brings it to us. He's the God that makes us aware of the resources that are available, and we need to be diligent in digging for them. Yes. He says that, that he's the God who gave you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. God made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As believers, we can be a part of those promises if we just remember who God is. Yes. Moses, Moses gives this word. He gives this word because the same God that brought them out of Egypt, the same God that brought them through the wilderness, the same God they worshiped when they were in Egypt, they called upon in Egypt, they worshiped while they were in the wilderness, they have a tendency to forget about that God. They, 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 they may go on and, and serve idol gods. They have a tendency. They thought it was necessary to worship God when they were in bondage. They thought it was necessary to call on God as long as Pharaoh would not allow them to have straw to make brick with. But the moment they arrived, the moment they got better things, the moment they got a chance to do what they want to do, the moment they paid off their house, <laughs> the moment they got their new car, the moment they got their new donkey or their new wagon, the, the moment that they got the right mail that they've been, been waiting for in the mailbox, they forgot about God. I say to you today, remember the God of your resources. <laughs> they thought it was necessary to honor him as long as they were begging him for stuff. But Moses knew when they got to their newfound prosperity, they would have a tendency to no longer depend on God. Let me just say to you today, you need to depend on him. You need to depend on him in the good times and in the bad times. You need to depend on him. Moses reminded them to not forget to praise God. Not for, don't forget to bless him. Don't, don't forget to walk with him. And whatever you do, don't forget to follow the commandments of Almighty God. Look, it's in the text. It's right there in the text. He says, the covenant that God has promised your foreparents, the covenant that God has promised those that came before you, those those covenant, uh, those those promises are available to you today, but you got to act right. Mm -hmm. look, look at what it says. Verse number 19. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget your God, God, your get the Lord, forget the Lord, your God, and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Mm. Moses says to them, Now I've seen what God has done. I've watched God moving in your life. I've watched God heal you. I've watched God feed you. i watched God give you water when you're thirsty. i watched God make sure as you walk through the wilderness, your feet did not swell, your shoes didn't wear out, your clothes didn't wear out, and I never dare you to forget that God. God, you, you may not have what you want. You, you may not have what you've been praying 
for. You may not have all the things you would like to have, but I want to tell you, whatever you have, you got it from God. God has blessed us. He says, I swear before this covenant that he swore before God, I, I, I tell, I'm telling you, I'm going to testify against you. Moses is saying the fact of the matter is he is going to be a witness. <laughs> he's going to return. He's, he's going to stand up right he solemnly testified, I'm warning you today, you're going to perish. He says, I'm, I'm warning you, you will, you will not maybe perish. I'm warning you, you will surely perish. This word perish means to break down. This word perish means to, to destroy. This word perish means to, to fail. This word perish means to lose. This word perish means in no way will you get away. You cannot flee. So he says to them today, if you forget the God that brought you out of Egypt, if you forget the God that took you through the wilderness, if you forget the God that has blessed you in your health and your strength, if you forget the God who has, who has fed you when you're hungry, forget the God who has given you water when you were thirsty. I'm telling you today, I am testifying against you. I'm telling you today, you're going to perish. Today, men, women, boys, and girls need to know that they will perish. They will surely die. This word perish also means that you will be exterminated. You will be exterminated. You will be taken out of here. You, you, you will lose. Some folk are being exterminated in their mind. People are following cults all around us. People who drew, grew up in Sunday school. People who, who grew up hearing the word of God. People who grew up going to church and said, when I get out of here, I ain't going to church no more. They have gotten out there, and the devil has slowly dragged them in toward idol gods. <laughs> they, they, they are worshiping crystals now. They are chanting now. They are meditating on stuff other than the word of God now. The devil has convinced them that there is a better way other than the God that brought you over. If Big Mama was here, she would say it like this. She would say, I'm going to take the same bridge that brought me over here. I'm going to take the same bridge back. Yes. Let me tell you, it was God that has kept us. God kept us through slavery. God kept us through, through, uh, through martial law. God kept us uh, through cars marks. God kept us through the civil rights era. And he's the same God that's keeping us right now. Moses says, if you forget this God, if you walk away from this God, if you even play like you're walking away from this God, you will perish. And then he gives them an example. He gives them an example that just as he has destroyed other nations, he will also destroy this nation. Look, look at verse number 20. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. He says, you have seen me defeat other nations on your behalf. You have seen me destroy other nations because they did not obey me. You have seen me destroy other nations because they followed idol gods and didn't follow me. And just like you saw me destroy them. If you don't follow my commandments, if you're not obedient unto my commandments, I am going to destroy you too. Amen. The statement has been made. The statement has been made. God can bless you in the morning and destroy you by noonday. <laughs> Let me just tell you, God is in the process of blessing us. God is in the process of keeping us, but we have to obey and keep his commandments. As we obey and keep him, his commandments, we do not serve any other God. I heard a woman that had some airtime the other day. She, she had some TV time, so that says that she, she has connection. That means that, that she, has, she has influence. 
The problem is just because you got influence doesn't mean that you got the right to say anything you want to say. So when she was talking about prayer, she was talking about when I pray, I can call on my goddess. And, and people have, have gone out of their way to destroy the picture that the Bible paints of who God is. One woman says it like that. She says, I know God is a woman because he has a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you. We cannot have a substitute for God. We cannot have a thing that will take the place of God. We cannot put a person in the place of God. He is the great I am God. And he's the God that told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, I am who I am. And he's the God Almighty. So Moses served notice on them. And I come as a herald of the word of God. I come to yell it out from the word of God. That you need to know the God that I'm talking about. Yes. God Jehovah. God himself. The great I am God. Who is anybody he wants to be at the time you need him to be that. Yes. He is the great I am God. We must keep his commandments. The Lord says there should be no graven images of him. There ought not be anything that you want to say that is God. The Lord says I'm a jealous God. You shall not have no other God before me because I am a God who is jealous. We need to understand today, regardless of if we in between or if we blessed or if we on our way to blessings the way we want to be blessed, you need to keep this God and obey this God regardless of where you go. Yes. He is the God Almighty. So the word of God is written to us that we might better know this God. The word of God is written to us so we can know this God that I'm talking about. The word of God is written to us because he is the God of the word. And so we study the word of God so we can get to know the God of the word. He is the author and the finisher of the word. He is the one who penned the word. Yeah, 40 some men may have written the book. 40 some men may have had revelation. 40 some men in their strides may have penned the word, but God himself is the author of the only begotten word that we have. It is the word of God. We have to get to a point where we don't forget this God. We have to realize that he is God the spirit. He is God the Holy Spirit. He is God. Jesus Christ is the visible image of this invisible God. He is a, a one God. He is the only one God. This is not a polytheistic God. It's a monotheistic God. He is one God. Yes, right. You ought not have a God of the sky, a God of the wind, a God of the waves. Yes. We ought not have a God for our ride. We, we ought to know and understand and obey the almighty God himself. Mm -hmm. You see the devil claim himself to be mighty. But I know that the God we serve is almighty. He is the God that shuts the devil down. He is the God that rebukes the devourer for our sake. He is the God that blesses us and keeps us. And therefore, when we wake up in the morning, before we lay down at night, as we walk around all day, we ought to give that God the glory, give him the praise, and honor that God. And finally, he is the God who made a way out of no way. When we were sinking deep in sin, we were far from the peaceful shores. We were deeply stained within, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the water he lifted me. He is the God who keeps us. Our sins were as scarlet, but he washed us whiter than snow. He did it over 2,000 years ago. He did it for you and me over 2,000 years ago. He did it by way of his son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, born of a virgin. Jesus, God's only begotten son. Jesus the Christ got off in Bethlehem of Judea. Born of a woman that had never been with a man. 
Jesus the Christ never sinned. Jesus the Christ, who was sinless, died for sinful man. Yeah, there were three men hanging on the crosses that day. It was the man on the right, man on, on the left, but there was a man in the middle that died for all of us. Yes. He stood between us and God. He reached up and caught the, the holy hand of God, reached down and caught the unholy hand of man and brought a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Thank God for Jesus. He died over 2,000 years ago. Yes. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men killed him. Mean men nailed him tight. He died for you and me on a skull hill called Calvary. Took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because they, they didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus the Christ got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He died. He rose just for you and for me. And because he got up with all power, he is the God of resources. Our resources that we needed that day was forgiveness of our sin. Jesus did it for us. Amen. The resources that we needed that day was salvation. Jesus made it possible for us. I just want you to remember the God of our resources. He's the one that keeps us. We must obey him and walk with him. If you're listening to me today, you need to know this God of our resources. The word of God is written. So that we can get to know the God of the word. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. He's the God of our resources. We need to know him. I got to know him some years ago on May the 6th at Gentry High School. Miss Bonner's sixth period class. Room number two. Across the hall from the cafeteria, Dorothy Steele said to me in my geometry class, you don't have to keep living the way you're living. You can be born again. You can be saved. You can be changed. She went on to tell me that birds don't have to sing. Birds won't have to fly around the room. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God and invite him into your life. She continued by saying, the sky doesn't have to open. The earth doesn't have to quake. But what you must do is trust the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you. And he died for me. He didn't stay dead. She said, she said early that third day morning. He rose with all power. All power in heaven and earth. He rose with it in his hand. I say those same words to you today. Wherever you may be standing, wherever you may be sinning, wherever you may be lying. This is your moment. To get to know the God our resources and you can't get to know him without Jesus the door is open I just invite you to get to know Jesus by just repeating a simple prayer with me would you bow your head right now and just repeat after me Lord Jesus I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer honestly inviting Jesus into your life, we believe that you're born again. We believe that you're on your way to heaven when you die. We believe that 
that life has been instantly made different for you. Not worse, but better. If you've received Christ as your Savior during this broadcast, please, ma'am, please, sir, inbox me and let me know that you've received Jesus Christ. I want to rejoice with you and celebrate your newfound life in Christ. There may be others of you who, who struggle with sin like I do. And some reason or the other, you just can't get it right. I say to you, you'll never get it right on your own. You won't get it right by yourself. But you will get it right through Jesus. Turn back to him. Rededicate your life to him. Commit your life in obedience to him. That Jesus Christ will be your Lord, not just your Savior, but will also be your Lord. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Lord, we ask you to bless those who who need to turn their lives back to you. We ask you to convict and convince, Lord. We pray that you keep them, mold and shape their lives. Lead them, guide them, and direct them to always acknowledge and obey the God of our resources. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who who don't have a church home, I rep recommend the New Beginning Church. I recommend the New Beginning Church, a church where Jesus is at the forefront, Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the center of attention. You can join whether you're local or you're global. I recommend that you inbox me. And tell me you want to join the New Beginning Church and be a part of our family. We'll be glad to welcome you to our new church home. Again, thank you for hearing this message. Thank you for being a part of it. Now it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. As I said, we need to return to God our resources as God has given us our resources. It is it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord himself. It's time to give to God. And you can give to the New Beginning Church in three means. You can give by cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com or you can give by mailing your tithes and offering into New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 that's P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 We'll be glad to celebrate with you and you can see that your gifts will be at work by way of your tithes and your offering. Let me just say to those who have been giving on a regular basis, thank you, God bless you. Thank you for understanding and realizing that even though we're not presenting and you're not attending from the church location, that God is still asking you to bring forth your tithes and offering. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to give to the Lord by way of the New Beginning Church. Thank you for joining us this morning for our Sunday school. Our Sunday school is every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Our Sunday school is every Sunday morning on Facebook Live at 9 a.m. I want to thank Brother Miles and Brother Whitlock for allowing me to share with you this morning. I really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to share with you. Thank you for joining us this morning at our 1045 service. We're here every Sunday for 1045. So thank you and please continue to join us at 1045 every Sunday morning at these same stations, uh, Facebook Live as well as, as also uh, on Zoom. 
And also, please continue to join us on Wednesday. Please continue to jo join us every Wednesday at 7.20 p.m., 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study time. Thank you so much for just being a part of our service. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. Thank you, Father, for, for blessing us at the New Beginning Church. And I want to thank everybody for doing their Bible listening. We're doing our Bible listening and Bible journaling. I hear you say, oh, Lord, uh, if you've fallen off, get back on. You've fallen off. Get back on track. We are in Leviticus now. We're in Leviticus. Uh, I think we're in Leviticus chapter 11 today. We're in Leviticus. We're doing our Bible listening. And what we're doing is we have a plan. Yeah, please, ma'am, please, sir, look at my Facebook post, and you can see the, the first quarter plan of Bible listening. We have a plan where we're using our electronic devices, our phones, our iPads, our computers, our tablets. We're listening to the Bible every single day. We're listening, and we're journaling down what God is saying. We're writing down, putting in writing what God is saying as we go from one verse, one chapter to the other. So come on, join us with our Bible listening. Remember, it is the God of our resources that's in the Word of God. So it is the Word of God where we learn more about the God of the Word. So come on, be a part of our Bible listening and Bible journaling. Uh, at the end of the year, you should have several notebooks of what God has spoken to you by listening to the Word of God. Thank you so much. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up to the earth, from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance to hear your word, to be taught by your word, and listen to your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us, continue to walk with us, and continue to be a part of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.